Brandon, you want to add something there? And, um, it could also be, the, the other thing that we could also be, be feel like 10 feet tall because he has a chance to get the farm back and not have to sell it. Mm-hmm. That that's, that's one of his motivations, isn't it? One of his, the character motivations is that he, he's feeling like, you know what, I can do this, I can not let the farm be sold. Okay, does anybody have it? Would like to share one more inference or inference that their neighbor shared with you? Elizabeth? My neighbor inferred that he probably feels ten feet tall because oh, because he feels confident. Feels confident. Good. And confidence is confidence a feeling or an action? A feeling. A feeling. So it's a feeling that we feel about ourselves. Okay, if we're self confident. Kendall, real loud please. My neighbor inferred? Stood up against the mayor. That's right. It's hard for kids sometimes to stand up against adults, but he did it, didn't he? All right, Sharice, roll out, please. My partner inferred that he felt like my dad. Because kids aren't normally in the races. Okay, Taylor, last one. My partner is very that he feels ten feet tall because he got into the race and thinks he really won. Mm-hmm. He's feeling confident, like she said. He's feeling confident because he thinks he can win. All right, good. Uh, we're going to move on. I want you to continue doing what you're doing, stopping, thinking, and recording down your thoughts. He felt great. In his pocket, pocket was a map that Mayor Smiley had given him, showing him the 10 miles the race covered. Down Main Street, right on North Road, Little Willie could hardly hold back his excitement. Five miles of the race he traveled every day. He knew with his eyes closed. The, five, the last five miles were back into town along South Road, which was mostly straight and flat. Its speed would count here, and with the lead he knew he could get in the first five miles, Little Willie was sure he could win. As Little Willie hitched the searchlight to the sled, something down at the end of the street, some moving object caught his eye. They were difficult to see because they were all white. They were, there were five of them, and they were all beautiful. Uh, Tech side says they were all beautiful. They were all beautiful and white, and you're going to predict what you think those beautiful white objects were that caught his eye on the right. So you're going to begin with I'm predicting the objects were. Once you determine what your prediction is for those five beautiful objects, I want you to try and code how you know what those are. I want you to code that. Did you infer that? Did you remember another point in the text where it talked about that? Or part of the meaning of the story that you know from this chapter? Just write that down or code that in your thinking side. Don't anything? Yes, the objects could be anything. Anything reasonable. Anything reasonable for this chapter and for this book? What's the, name of the, chapter? the chapter is called Stone Fox. And there was already a clue at the beginning of this chapter about Stone Fox. And if you remember that clue, you're going to want to use that clue to help you kind of flash back to that section of the chapter. Okay, who, who wants to share what their prediction is in a complete sentence? And the complete sentence is, I'm, everybody, I'm predicting the white, beautiful objects are. Good. Okay, Brendan, real loud. I'm predicting white, beautiful objects are stone foxes. Because? Because in the beginning of the book, it said that the janitor that swept up at the post office, um, 
he said that Stone Fox was going to write it, and he had five um, Samoans. Samoans. Good, thank you. Good job. And don't forget to to finish your justification five, with because. There were five white women. All right, okay. Someone else? Taylor? Um, I think that the objects of the dogs that always went, which were stone boxes, though, because there were five of them and they're, um, are, they're um, in the snow, and I know that that type of dog is usually white. Okay. From my school. From your schema? Do you have any schema from watching the Iditarod video last week that we watched on YouTube? Mm -hmm. When there's white dogs on white snow, that it's very what? Hard to see. Hard to see. It's also what? Very bright. bright and shiny and reflective. Does anybody have a different prediction than the two predictions that have been shared so far? You have a different prediction? Okay, share yours in a complete sentence, please. I predict that it could be angels because it could be like angels of, of some fox, like angels that represent snow fox because... She predicts it could be angels because why? Because angels are beautiful and so it's something about snow fox. I'm sorry, I hear the last part. What was your justification? Because it said they were white and it was beautiful, and I was thinking of angels because they're white and beautiful. Okay, in your schema, they're white and beautiful. Okay, does anybody anybody agree with her? Disagree with her? Okay, J Jason, loud. I disagree with her because um, because because people don't because um. Most people don't know how angels look like. They might, they might be white. They might be um, they might be other colors. They might um, be like a peach color. They might wear like a robe. They could be white. Okay. Does so anybody disagree with that? Does anybody disagree with her for a different reason? Catherine. I disagree with a lot because people. Because I think. Um, when she said it was angels, I, I was thinking of illusion, because people usually can't see actual angels. Because they're in heaven. They're usually um, up in the heavens and stuff, so it must be like hers, must be like an illusion. Okay. Does somebody disagree with Milan for a, yet a different reason? Something that's story based? Elizabeth? I disagree. They were crawling around, and earlier in the book, it said that the storm fox had five wolves, and they and they looked like that. So I think it was storm fox as well. Okay, Kendall. I just say it was Milan because usually books give you hints about like what's going to happen next, and when you get five. Okay. Somebody has somebody has said that. Does anybody have a disagreement with Nuan? And Nuan, you know we're not picking on you. We're just trying to we're just trying to get at the meat of what what could be reasonable for this story and what couldn't be reasonable for this story. Okay. And remember that level four critical thinkers agree and disagree with each other, right? Okay. Um, anybody have a text-based answer? A text-based justification? Um, Kaden? I mean, yeah, Kaylee. Uh, I disagree with Milan because in the book it talked about dogs and like really, and okay. not about angels. Angels okay. fly to them. Okay. So it's sort of what I was getting at here. Is this this book? Are there have there been any other angels in this book? No. No. And, As, and it hasn't talked about then, like it's talked about a lot about um stone fox and that stuff. And chapter is called Stone Fox. I think that's a big clue that it would probably be Stone Fox's dogs and then Liam says Stone Fox has five dogs. And uh, there are five white beautiful things. I think those would probably be the dogs. And if you feel like flying at white, then you like to say they're angels. Okay, and here's what you can do too. 
when you agree, what did we talk about last week? When you agree or disagree with somebody, or when you're the person that other people are agreeing or disagreeing with you, what can you do with your thinking a little bit? What can you do? First, you can listen to their, their line of thinking. And what can you do with your thinking? You can change your thoughts. You can change your thoughts. You can revise your thinking. Good job, Deja. So, Milan, I invite you to think about what some of these people have said. Maybe you might possibly want to revise your line of thinking. Because opinions are not right or wrong, but we have evidence and justification that we can find to support some arguments over others, right? Okay, good job, guys. All right. As little Willie hitched her set to the sled, something down the end of the street, something, some moving objects caught his eye. They were difficult to see because they were all white. There were five of them, and they were beautiful. In fact, they were the most beautiful Samoans little Willie had ever seen. Okay, so now you can, what can you do with your prediction? You can confirm. Thank you, Brendan. You can confirm your prediction. The dogs held their heads up proudly and strutted in unison. Unison. Oh, that's everybody. That's unison. That means all together in order. Okay, it's a vocabulary word you can write down. They pulled a large but lightly constructed sled. They all pulled a large, they also pulled a large but not so, but by no means lightly constructed man. Way down at the end of the street, the man looked normal, but as the sled got closer, the man got what and what? Bigger? Bigger. Yeah, bigger and bigger. Now, you need to write how you knew that. What were the clues that led you to that guess? The man was an Indian. Dressed in furs and leather with moccasins, they came all the way up to his knees. His skin was dark, his hair was dark, and he wore a dark colored headband. His eyes sparkled in the sunlight, but the rest of his face was as hard as stone. Okay, hard as stone is a simile, and the whole description should paint a what in your mind? A picture which is called a visualization. Good. Wait, hold on. We have a great, we have a great uh, understanding up here. Um, someone said up here, I don't get it. What does it mean when our brain says, I don't get it? What does that mean? It's turned off. It means it, no. It means it's turned on. When, we, when our brain says, I don't get it, it means our brain is turned on. And that's a good thing or a bad thing? It's a good thing because that means our meaning is starting to what? Confuse you. Confuse it all us? Stuff in your brain? It's because you. the meaning of the story is starting to fall what? Apart. 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 And we need, as good readers, we need to what? Stop. Stop and put the pieces of a meaning back together so it makes sense. So what are you confused about? I was confused about how his face is hard. Does it mean like... Dark or just literally hard? Okay, it says that his face, it does, does it say that his face is hard? It says his face was as hard as stone. That's a good confusion. Similes are, like that literary element we talked about early, earlier, is his face really made of stone? No. No. Is he really 10 feet tall? No. No. So similes are another form of figurative language. It's, he's not, his face is not really made out of stone. It's a way to connect something new to something known. You all know what a stone is. You all know stones are hard, hard to break. And so if his face, it looks as hard as stone, then that simile, that analogy helps you understand that stone fox is probably going to be what? Hard. Tough, yeah. Tough because, why Catherine? Because, um, like, if his dogs go wild and he falls and, and he hits the snow and, and there might be something hard on their leg, he won't get hurt and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it could mean two things. It could mean that he's hard on the outside. It could also mean that he's hard where? On the inside. On the inside, in his heart. And he also has the determination and bravery to win that race. What are you going to add on? I was going to infer that, like, the stone... His face is as hard as a stone. Like, that's why he's probably called Stone Fox. Mmm. Good. So you're using text based So he's clues. a fox? <laughs> <laughs> well, but we, ha we don't know why he's called Stone Fox. But we do know that he's an Indian. 
And what can we infer about Indian names from the Indian culture that we know about? What can we infer, Naomi? I already know that Indians always have crazy names. Oh, they have crazy names. Like crazy names Indians. that probably mean something to them, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't know the story of why he's called Stone Fox, but maybe we'll learn that in another chapter. Oh, Francesca? Okay, so that's a good confusion. That's one of those confusions that we need to put to the side and figure out if we can determine why he's why where Fox comes from in his name. Brielle? I think it's that he's called Stone Fox because his face looks sort of like a stone and maybe he's killed a lot of foxes to bring back to the Indians. Okay. Catherine, what else? What other kinds of in, what other kinds of determinations can you make about Fox? Why Fox is part um, of his name? I think because when they were describing what he looked like, he said something about fur, and I, fur reminds me of mammals, and his name is a is stone fox, and maybe he wears like stuff that makes him look like a fox. Okay, and remember that when we talk about when we talk about characters. And we talk about animals a lot. We talk about attributes and characteristics. And so if you think about the attributes and characteristics of a fox, maybe he, the man, also has some characteristics of a fox. Maybe he well, acts a, a little bit like a fox sometimes. Do you know how foxes act? Yeah. No. Brendan, do you know how foxes act? Um, like maybe he's real smart. Okay, so you, and you maybe like smart and sneaky like a fox. So maybe that's... That's an inference that the author wants you to make. He wants you to think, hmm, foxes are sneaky and smart, so maybe he's sneaky and smart. Do you need to be sneaky and smart to be, to win races? No. Well, yes. 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 Why? Because, like, um, you, need, you need to be smart because you need, like, you need to know which, like, to tell the dogs which way to turn and stuff because they might not know it. And then you need to be um, sneaky because, like, if you're... Let's say you're behind Little Willie, almost at the finish line, you have to sneak up next to him and go past him. Francesca? I think you need to be sneaky and smart because you need to be smart. Well, I think Elijah's reason for smart, but sneaky, I think if you're sneaky and um, smart, then you would probably know some shortcuts to get in front of people. Mm. Good. Good, um, good. Good conclusions you're drawing there. Okay. Let me keep going before we get, we have two more pages to the end of the chapter. <coughs> the sled came to a stop right next to little Willie. The boy's mouth hung open as he tilted his head way back to look up at the man. Little Willie had never seen a giant before. Gosh, little Willie gasped. The Indian looked at little Willie. His face was solid granite. His eyes were alive and cunning. Howdy, little Willie blurted out, and he gave a nervous smile. But the Indian said nothing. His eyes shifted to Searchlight, who let out a soft moan, but did not bark. He's dead. <laughs> okay, good. So write that down. On the left side, in quotation marks, you're going to write a soft moan by, by Searchlight. And then I heard Brendan say... I heard Brendan say why he thought he moaned, so you should also infer why you think Searchlight moaned. So Searchlight's a dog? Searchlight's a person? Mm -hmm. Searchlight is Willie's dog. Mm -hmm. He was, a, a, you can get the drift when he says the, a nervous smile. <laughs> Lily blurted out, a nervous smile. He must be scared. The giant walked into city, the city hall building. I hope you can all infer why the giant is walking into the city hall building. Why? So he can rush up for the race. So he can sign up for the race. Good, Aiden. Word, word, like word on the street. Word that Stone Fox had entered the race spread throughout the town of Jackson within an hour and throughout the state of Wyoming within the day. Stories and legends about the awesome mountain man followed shortly. 
Little Willie heard many of them at Lester's general store. Was this time in Denver he snapped a man's back and snapped the man's back with two fingers? Said Dusty, the town. But nobody believed him really. Little Willie learned that no white man had ever heard Stone Fox talk. Stone Fox refused to speak with the white man because of the treatment his people had received. Meaning what? Uh, that the um, English brought like some disease and killed okay. his family. Okay. It's, do you think it's something with um, treatment of his family or treatment of all Native Americans? Uh, all Native Americans. Okay. Okay. His um, his tribe. He's getting ready to explain it now, so you can confirm your your inference. His tribe, the Shoshone, who were peaceful seed gatherers, had been forced to leave Utah and settle on a reservation in Wyoming with another tribe called the Arapaho. Stone Fox's dream was for his people to return to their homeland. Stone Fox was using the money he won from raising to simply buy the land back. He had already purchased four farms and over 200 acres. That stone fox was smart, all right. In the next week, Little Willie and Searchlight went over the 10-mile track every day until they knew every inch of it by heart. Now, what does by heart mean? It means, um, right. it means like Okay, Gracia, what do you think? To know it really well. To, good, know it really well. Have it memorized almost. So Fox is like an expert. Good, I love how you're using the vocabulary word of the week this week. Excellent job. Stone Fox didn't <coughs> practice at all. In fact, Little Willie only saw Stone Fox do the course once, and then he sure wasn't going very fast. The race was scheduled for Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Only nine sleds were entered. Mayor Smiley had hoped for more contestants, but after Stone Fox had entered, well, you couldn't blame people for wanting to save their money. They want the little kid to win. Okay, you think so, Catherine? What's your inference about why people wouldn't wouldn't enter the race after that? Because they already know Stone Fox is going to win every time. So, and if he wins. I'm thinking they lose money, just and like they did it for no reason. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good justification. Did you have Francesca? Um, I think they want to spend their money because if they spend their money, they're like just gonna lose all of it because I know Stone Fox is gonna win because at the store that Lily went to, um, the guy he said he said that Stone Fox has never lost the race before. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I don't want people to go into the race it's it's because if you have the money, you to So it's safer to save your money than to wait to... Because yeah. you don't know if you're going to win. And now you're thinking you're for sure not going to win a stone boxes in the race. It was true. Mayor Smiley had hoped for more contestants, but after Stone Fox had entered, well, he couldn't blame people for wanting to save their money. It was true Stone Fox had never lost a race, but Little Willie wasn't worried. He had made up his mind to win, and nothing was going to stop him, not even Stone Fox. Okay, so the chapter. Chapter 7 is called The Meeting, and we'll read that one tomorrow, The Meeting. Okay, again, I want to, I really want to compliment everybody today for doing a nice job really staying tuned in and engaged with the story, thinking about what things could mean, using your good inferring skills, and really thinking and listening to each other so that you have some good arguments and justifications for people. Remember that when we are in reading class, is arguing a good thing or a bad thing? Good. It's a good thing because that means we're being critical what? Only for our thinkers. We're critical thinkers so that we can evaluate and analyze each other's line of thinking and maybe we can help others see what we see and understand what we understand and we can do the same by listening to our peers. All right, let me change the boards and we'll get, get on to our groups. Oh, Mark,